weeks ago, Ainge XL said, Hey, I have an idea for new series. What about how to make game like Piggy? It's pretty popular. You might get some views. Suddenly my eyes lit up with the possibilities. This was it. This was my big break. Alvin blocks. I'm I'm with you. You. And then Breggy Bread commented, You want him to teach you how to make a copy game? Trash. And so I shelved the idea. Then, one week later, Ainge XL tried again. Unperturbed, he commented, Hey, I have idea for new series. How about how to make a piggy game? I'm just saying, if you don't want, you can use your own idea. And so, I replied. Challenge accepted. But, there was only one problem. What on earth is a piggy game? And so, I made my way to the front page, and there she was, piggy in all her glory. Only 250,000 players. Pretty small fry, really. Clearly, if I want to make my own version, I'm going to have to do some research. So, in the name of science, let's give it a play and see what we need to do for our own version. Now, the first thing that struck me is the menu here, which is simple, but looks pretty cool. Uses the camera and has this neat little transition where you go to click play and then you vote on your map and game mode and such. Now, once the game actually started, I was then a little bit confused as the game doesn't tell you anything, doesn't explain what you need to do other than the obvious to escape from the monster. So I just spent the first few minutes running around like a headless chicken, just completely confused. Eventually I figured out there's different items you can pick up, but it still wasn't clear exactly how or where to use them. Eventually I found a, a gun, so I excitedly picked this up and used to take on the pig thing. However, I was pretty disappointed when I didn't actually kill the enemy and win the game like I'd hoped might happen, but merely paused his attack for a few seconds. After this, I continued running around like a headless chicken and I couldn't figure out where I need to go. This basically continued until I got trapped and killed. Great first attempt there. After this, the game puts you in a kind of waiting area where you can watch other players. I desperately watched Disney Mickey 64 in the hopes of finding the keys to becoming a pro gamer. Clearly, she had more of a clue what was going on than me. So I watched this use the keys to unlock areas, which then gave her items. It's kind of cycle that seems to rinse and repeat in the game. She then, near the entrance to one door, walked through it and disappeared. Okay then. Then she got teleported next to me inside the lobby area. And I initially thought she somehow died as well. But after watching another player do it, I realized that she'd actually won by escaping. But again, this really isn't made clear in the game. Uh, it could really benefit from adding some sort of contextual information to tell you what's happening, or at least give me a clue for a noob like myself. Finally, the only player left was Scorpio Girl 070. Somehow she's managed to spawn herself outside of the map completely, and I watched as both her and the monster played out a tragic dance where they were both stuck on opposite sides of an invisible wall. Hooray for bug free gaming. But now, it was my turn. The research was over, and it was time to remake this game, and I wanted to complete it as quick as possible. This wasn't going to be easy, and the clock was ticking. Admittedly, this probably shouldn't have been the first priority, but I started out by building my monster to set the theme. I didn't want it to be a complete copy of Piggy, so instead of creating a pig, I thought my game would involve maybe some kind of evil teddy bear creation. I set to work creating this monstrosity, and for a moment it started to more resemble Snoo, the alien from Reddit, if you know what that is. Uh, so I added a few blood effects, and it started to actually look quite scary, but either way, it was certainly no work of art. But then, DISASTER STRUCK! For some reason, I'd made the mistake of trying to use unions, and I think what happened is when I saved the game and came back a few minutes later, uh, maybe my internet connection had dropped perhaps, but either way, the unions were gone. They were just empty boxes of what had once been. I tried reloading the save and even deleted the cache as directed by a dev form post, but to no avail. It was hardly a great creation anyway, so I just decided to cut my loss at this point. And as frustrating as it was, at least it was an opportunity to make something better. And so here we have it, this was version 2. I actually really like how this little guy came out. 
He looks so cute. Don't you just want to hug him? No, never mind. Next, I need to transform it from a boring model into a character we can actually use in a game. So I set about naming each individual part inside the model, giving them all a unique name. This is important because it's part of a process known as rigging, which enables the character to be used for animation. So to rig the teddy, I like to use a plugin called Rig Edit from Archmage. I use the pro version, but you can get the light version for free as well. You also need to make sure you have a part called Humanoid Root Part, which you can see I almost forgot. This ensures robots recognises it as a humanoid and allows movement and animation and all that fun stuff to work. So you can make this roughly in the centre of the model, uh, make it transparent, and then you can start your rigging, which I did by adding welds between the parts I don't want to animate but need to stick together. So this means things like welding the eyes and ears to the head, along with the hands to the arms and so on. The plugin then shows you little lines that show you what parts are welded together. Once we've created our welds, I can then move on to adding the joints. These are the parts we actually want to animate. I'm keeping things pretty simple, so I just have joints for the neck, shoulders and hips. As we add these parts together, you can see this simple skeleton structure begins to form inside the model. And once everything is connected, we can see if it's working by opening the animation editor plugin. I'm not very experienced with animations to be honest, so I just use the default plugin from Roblox, though I know there are others available. How this works is you apply different rotations and positions to the joints we set earlier using the rig editor. We can then set these positions to different points on the timeline until we eventually build it with something that looks a bit like an animation. It wasn't very spectacular, but I ended up throwing together these walk and attack animations that I think will pass. All I had to do then was click to export the animations to Roblox and we can then use them for our game. First though, I just wanted to check everything was rigged right. So I renamed them all to start a character. Now it's essential that you name it perfectly like that. Uh, if you use different case or different spelling, then it's not going to work. And then you place it inside the starter player folder and that'll make your player then spawn in as whatever model you've got. So this seemed to work at first, but then I realized the movement was all messed up and my teddy bear seemed to be moving sideways like a crab. So to fix this, I then went back, edited the humanoid root part and rotated it round so that its face, its forward face, was pointing forwards. So as I changed everything around, I also had to go back and reset some of the joints while I was doing this. Now I could click test and when I spawned in, I was finally facing the right way and could actually move around the base plate a bit. Although it's without an animation, so it looks a bit boring. Next, to get those animations we made working, now Roblox uses an animation script that gets added by default to every character. I figured as our homemade character was fairly simple, we could just adapt the existing script and swap in our own animations. As it happens, the Roblox wiki actually has a page on this very topic, so I just did a cheeky copy and paste of our own animations link into that script and hit play again. Sadly though, it wasn't quite that easy, as I then got a warning that the animation script couldn't find the left shoulder. This uh, threw me a little bit as I checked and thought, well, it is named left shoulder. Eventually though, I realised we need to go back to our model, change the name of the joints, adding in spaces to ensure they perfectly match those contained in the default Roblox character. Once this was changed, I formed back in excited to see it work, but no. Instead, we were just greeted by this bobbing head animation. Hmm. The head seemed to taunt us almost. There was no leg action, just this head moving from side to side. So after yet more digging, I came across the humanoid hip height property. By setting this to match the approximate height of the top of my character's legs, the humanoid object can then properly compute its magic. And yes, we were finally in business. But... Ugh, more problems. Now our animation was finally playing, but only once. When we first press the key, it goes, but then it won't loop after that. Thankfully though, this is a fairly easy fix by returning back to the animation and just ensuring the loop button was enabled and then re-uploading it. So we spawn back in, yet again, and would you look at that, we finally got our walking teddy of death. Progress at last. Right, what's next to do? Oh, yeah, actually make the game. Will I succeed or maybe just give up and die? Subscribe to find out in the next episode.